all right everyone welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to talk about the 392 6.4 liter intake manifold uh all the pieces necessary uh and you know a rough estimate on how much it's all going to cost shake and bake uh, teeing up another video and let's talk about the 392 uh, intake manifold what what you can expect and, and you know kind of a rough estimate in the real cost how much it's gonna cost you so um, you know there's some a lot of discussions about the 3 392 intake manifold on the 57 Hemi um, yes you will you will gain some power it's not a huge power adder you know any I, I would say anywhere from you know 5 to 10 maybe 15 horsepower um, but what the intake really does is it gives you the long and the short runners that the 57 intake doesn't have and what those short and long runners do bottom line is they they flatten out your tor torque and horsepower curves from a dyno perspective it flattens it out and what that does is it keeps the power moving so uh, you know before you know my car would hit you know that 85 90 range and it would just flat it would just flatline um, you know you couldn't feel the pull anymore where you know you add the 392 intake manifold with the short and the long runners now it'll pull all the way through you know 110 115 and it'll keep right on pulling so that's really what the 392 intake manifold does for you uh, when you put it on a 57 so um, cost wise um, you know it's 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 gonna vary it all depends whether you, you know you buy a new intake manifold you find a used one uh, and you know where you can find the uh, the other parts uh, that go into uh, to putting in the manifold. So basically, for me, because I have a shaker, that's going to add another couple hundred dollars to uh, to your tab uh, because the uh, the intake manifolds are different between the 6.4 and the 5.7. So there's a different bracket uh, for your shaker to sit upon. And that bracket uh, cost me, uh, I think it was right at $300 uh, just for the bracket uh, for the shaker. So if you don't have a shaker, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so if you don't have a shaker, um, all you need is the 392 intake manifold and all of the electronic uh, equipment to go along with it to make use of uh, the long and short runners. And I'll put a list in the description uh, and a link to where I bought all of my stuff. Um, uh, I think it was, uh, I think all of it was from eBay. I got it from, uh, but you can do some searching on your own, see if you can find it a little bit cheaper. But it was roughly in the magnitude of another $200, $250 on top of uh, getting the uh, getting the manifold. So. You can dig on the forums, you can dig on eBay, uh, look around, see if you can find a used one. Uh, most of the used ones I see uh, are in that $300 range, um, depending on what else comes with it, right? Some people include the injectors, some people don't. Um, for me, I didn't get the injectors, I just got the intake manifold, uh, because uh, at this point I don't have a fuel issue, I have plenty of fuel, plenty of pump. Uh, I have no problems with uh, getting enough fuel to keep keep shake and bake running. Um, so, all right, let's talk about the list of stuff that you you are going to need. All right, everyone, it is the next day. Uh, 
So I went in and made the video for yesterday. And now I'm going to go ahead and go down the list uh, of things that you're, you're going to need uh, for the 392 intake manifold swap on a 5.7. So, and, and we'll go over the prices. So the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is the intake manifold. Uh, depending on whether you're going to go new, you're going to go used. Uh, you know, I've seen them used as cheap as 300 350 New ones, I believe, are around the 400 450 range. I uh, didn't do a whole lot of research into the new ones because I, I, I got a used one for 300 uh, The next thing you're going to need is some type of RPM switch. Uh, the RPM switch that I went with is the MSD one. Uh, and that price is right around $188. And I'll link every, everything in the description uh, on where I got my stuff. I got most of it, uh, most of it off of eBay. Um, so that's probably the best place you're going to get it. Um, so the next thing, you're, you're going to need a three circuit circuit box. Uh, the price for that is approximately $90. Um, then you're going to need a, it actually says a Jeep solenoid for the short runner, short runner solenoid. Uh, that's going to cost you about 50 bucks. So if you total that up, go on the cheap end for the intake manifold for $300. You add all of that up. That's about $628. Um, and if you have a shaker, you're also going to have to buy the 6-4 shaker bracket, uh, which is another $320. So if you have uh, if you have a shaker, you're going to wind up paying about $948. Uh, if, you, if you don't have the shaker again, uh, you're looking at about $628. <clears throat> um, so what's not included in that price is the uh where your throttle body sits is different on the 64 than the 57 and I'll show that to you now all right we're looking at my 64 intake manifold and as you can see the throttle body sits over here where on the 57 the throttle body comes straight out of the intake manifold and sits right here. So the hidden cost is uh, you're gonna have to buy some type of or make or uh, you know rig up a uh, a tube from your current either cold air intake or just your regular uh, regular intake filter from that to your uh, throttle body because it is different and oh by the way don't forget about the uh, intake air temperature gauge uh, or uh, uh, the intake air temperature sensor right so you gotta have a spot for that as well so don't forget that uh, when you're looking at this piece from your filter to your uh, throttle body all right back to the car Okay, so now you've seen the one little hidden cost. Not sure what that's going to cost you because I had a friend give me his uh, his tube for the 390 for the from a from a uh, stock 392. Uh, so if you can find that, you know somewhere you might even be able to go to a junkyard find one. Um, the shaker version's no different than the the regular version. So all you got to do is find uh, from your uh, from your filter to your uh, throttle body. So that being said, again, just to recap, roughly $628 if you don't have a shaker, uh, and that could go up depending on how much you pay for the intake manifold. And then if you have a shaker version, uh, you're looking at $948. And again, that could go up depending upon how much you pay for the intake manifold. So there, there are multiple uh, other options out there um, the, from what I've seen and the research I've done, uh, the best so far, the best aftermarket one is the Victor two, uh, Edelbrock Victor two intake. 
<clears throat> and those are that's that's the one that most uh, most people suggest uh, getting for the five seven. So those, just looking today, range in about the nine hundred and thirty six dollar range. So you know if you if you if you if you don't have a shaker version, you're looking at probably another three hundred dollars to get the Victor two. Uh, and if you have a shaker, um, you know, it's right about the same cost. But what I don't know with the Victor 2 is what you would need uh, to keep your shaker. So there could be, another, could be another hidden cost in there as well. I don't know if your stock 5.7 shaker bracket uh, will work with the Victor 2. And I don't know if the 6.4... Uh, bracket works with the uh, the Victor 2. I haven't seen anyone put uh, a Victor 2 on a shaker. Uh, if anyone has, please link it in the comments uh, so people with shakers can take a look and see uh, see how to put in a Victor 2. But uh, yeah, I didn't say it earlier, but you can see I posted the list, uh, the price uh, of everything, uh, and then in the comments, I'll put a link to... Uh, to all the places on eBay uh, where you can find this stuff, except for the shaker bracket. Uh, you're really going to have to go to your Dodge dealership. Uh, I'm going to try and dig up the uh, the part number so no one gets confused because it did take us a while to uh, to figure out what the part number was for the shaker bracket. Um, if I can dig that up, I will. Um, if I can't find it, you're just going to have to go to uh, go to your Dodge dealership Go to the parts section and just explain it. Explain to them uh, uh, what you're looking for, and they can they can dig up that part number for you. All right, that's going to do it for this one, folks. Uh, you know, if you're currently subscribed, appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, you know, you guys keep watching the videos. You keep commenting. Uh, I try and I try and reply to uh, all of the comments I can. Uh, sometimes it's hard to find the ones that are a little bit deeper, but uh, I do try to respond to uh, every comment. Uh, and I get, you know, I get a lot of questions on a lot of different things. So I try and uh, once I get a number of them on a certain topic, uh, I try and throw up a, a, a video on that topic. So yeah, please keep commenting. Uh, and if you're stopping in for the first time, you like the content, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell uh, so you get notifications when uh, when I post new content. Uh, again, I appreci appreciate everyone, uh, subscribers and non-subscribers, taking some time out of your day uh, to you know to watch the video, run through it. And again, if you're not subscribed, you like the content, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it helps the channel out. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Until next time.